Win big with new DRF All Access Pass Performances. With one best in class product, you now get all three pass performance formats. Go to drf.com and use coupon code one free PP for a free single card today. Hi everyone, I am GW Cola alongside David Aragona for another Daily Racing Form race preview. This time we're going to head out to Belmont at the Big A for Saturday, October the 26th. We're going to look at race number eight, which is the grade three 49er. Make sure you're subscribed to our YouTube channel as we will have lots of information leading into the Breeders' Cup for you. Those pre-entries are already out. We have packages uh, available where you can save a ton of money and you can already start handicapping and looking at those pre-entries. But David, we have to make some money this week weekend so we have a big bankroll for the breeders cup next week let's get into the grade three 49er and take a look at the field for this one uh three-year-olds and up going that one turn mile over at belmont at the big a and i thought a pretty evenly matched group in here coastal mission to the outside you have listed as the lukewarm five to two morning line favorite i think that horse will take some support in very nice form but down to the inside you have some familiar names like repo rocks who's coming up on a million dollars right now i think with a win here would become a millionaire messier who's a multiple graded stakes winner who was a very highly regarded three-year-old a couple years back so but an interesting group and again another group that feels like a lot of horses that are quite on the cusp of graded stakes, not quite grade one horses, maybe kind of in and out. And that's why we're at this grade three level. Yeah, I think if it's the race that you want to look for a price or do some stopping for value, you certainly can because Coastal Mission, he's definitely the horse to beat off his recent victory at Parks, but he doesn't possess the kind of form that's going to scare anybody away. And as you said, it is a pretty evenly matched group on paper. Well, let's take a look at Timeform US and what the pace projector thinks about this one. From the inside, they've got Ripo Rocks kind of holding that position there, David. Uh, also horses that will be forward. Nelson Avenue, who showed some speed last time out, and that was successful. Nelson Avenue looking for a third straight win, stepping up against Stakes Company. Those are two of the horses that are projected to be towards the front end in here. Yeah, Rebel Rocks could certainly go from the inside. He got a very aggressive ride in his last start at Parks, uh, got caught at the end of that race. So we'll see if they want to be so forward this time. He certainly does have the capability to stalk. Uh, Nelson Avenue maybe a little bit more committed to going forward in here. And then we'll see what we get from the number two, Messier, coming off the layoff. He certainly has plenty of early speed. We'll see if they use it going the one-turn mile. Let's take a look at this field, starting with Repo Rocks, who is a 10-time winner and uh, knows where that wire is. Even in his last start in the Parks Dirt Mile on September the 21st, it was in between horses, kind of three-way battle for the lead, opened up a length at the top of the lane, uh, got passed, and even after getting passed, kind of dug in. So it's a game horse who just doesn't like letting horses go by him. And from the inside, feels like a horse who will be a part of the early pace and kind of a measuring stick for this field, David. Yeah, we'll take a look at the replay of that race when we get to Coastal Mission. And Repo Rocks, a horse that it looked like he was waiting on horses a little bit at the quarter pole that day because he sort of got to the front end and maybe it was the bigger crowd in parks or something was bothering him because he just put his ears straight up as soon as they turned into the lane. It looked like he was almost unsure about whether or not to go forward. And then once Coastal Mission came to him, he started to run on again just as they got to the wire, as you said, sort of battling back at the end of that race. I still wonder if he possesses the brilliance that he once did. I mean, there was a time when he was posting buyers around 110 over this circuit. I don't think he's that horse anymore, but he's still pretty good, and he fits in a grade three event like this. Messier, multiple graded stakes winner. Um, he has not raced, though, in almost six months, but when you're coming off of his last couple races, they're back-to-back -back victories. He was in really nice form, uh, got good trips in both of those races, and that's sort of what you figure with him. He wants to be more forwardly placed, and here's a look at that Pretty easy victory last time we saw him. This was on May 3rd in the Westchester. Yeah, I thought he got a little lucky this day because, number one, the track was a little kind of speed. And also, the runner-up post time was probably a better horse than him, got an what I thought was an overconfident ride and probably should have gotten the job done this day. But Messier is able to hold on for the victory. He also took advantage of a track that was very kind of speed in his start prior to that in the Excelsior. It was a big speed bias on March 30th, and he was towards the front every step of the way, did get disqualified out of the victory for a slightly controversial decision. He's a pretty good horse on his best day. Just wondering what you get off the layoff. He does show some pretty fast works in the last month for trainer Rick Dutrow.
stage raider, grade three place. He's also a stakes winner. Uh, he was in really nice form heading into the Breeders' Cup Dirt Mile last year. Uh, just hasn't really been able to put it all back together this year, but he is coming off of an effort on a sloppy racetrack. Two of his last three races have been just a little bit better than some of the ones prior to that. So Stage Raider putting two starts together, second off the short little break. Johnny V aboard for Cherie DeVoe. Uh, give us some thoughts on Stage Raider in here. Yeah, I think the inclination might be to just dismiss this horse because it at least seems like he's way off form from his best days, as you said, uh, last summer in 2023. But as you start to pick through some of his recent races, I can make several excuses. He actually ran kind of an amazing race in the Clark last year. It doesn't necessarily look like it on paper, but he spotted the field almost 20 lengths at the start and was actually beaten by less than that. So there's an argument he would have been competitive that day with a clean break. And then the Salvatore Mile, I mean, he only finished two lengths behind Coastal Mission, who could be the favorite in here and got a wider track than that one going three to four wide around both turns didn't run well in the mammoth cut but he was kind of towards the inside shuffled back every step of the way you didn't want to be inside that day and then last time kind of got found himself in an early duel in a small field with his stablemate mate Ostro. they both dueled themselves into defeat and set it up for that closer three technique i think he's better than he looks based on the recent results and i can project him getting the right kind of trip in here just sitting in behind the speeds i don't think there's a ton of pace in this race and he's probably going to get the right kind of stalking trip that he does prefer and i trust sheree devoe to eventually get this horse back into form because they've been kind of banging their head against the wall in these tougher graded stake spots i think eventually he's going to show up Jefferson Street puts the blinkers on today. Drew the rail last time out, was inside, and really started to get into it late up for second. Now the blinkers off. Uh, now the blinkers come on, hoping to maybe just get a little more focus, a little more forward in here. Um, Jefferson Street with Pratt aboard is another one that has a high ceiling. He's certainly capable of jumping up with a big effort. Uh, and coming off that second place finish, do you feel like he's rounding back into form here? It's possible. I, I don't love the horses that he finished right around last time. Horses like Henro and Dilger, I wouldn't really consider them to be contenders in a race like this, but he did earn a respectable 94 buyer that day. I was a little disappointed in his Jerkins performance two back. I thought given the pace set up, he should have come running a little bit more at the end. He just didn't really make an impact that day. Um, maybe a little bit against the track prior to that in the Amsterdam. That 102 buyer that he earned at Saratoga kind of jumps off the page, but starting to look like that might be a number that just lives in isolation in retrospect. And I also don't have full confidence that he's one who will get better stretching out to the mile. Win it is the next one who is coming off of a, kind of a lackluster effort, uh, just sort of chasing a field around. He was behind Messier a few starts back. He does feel like he'll need to run a career best in here, David, to be competitive with this group. Yeah, he's a horse that sometimes has trouble getting out of the gate. He can be a little bit goofy with his antics during races. And um, you don't want to give away anything at the start to some quick horses like Repo Rocks, Messier, and others in this race. So it just seems like that's a problem. And also the fact that he just hasn't been in the best form recently is going to make it tough for him to win here. One horse that has been in really nice form as of late is Nelson Avenue, who beat $50,000 claimers, then stepped up and beat non-winners of two for Wayne Potts. So trying to go for three in a row, they step up and face stakes company for the first time and can at least see this horse being forwardly placed in a race that doesn't have that much early speed in here. So not a bad spot for them to take a big swing with a sharp horse, David, but another one who will need to continue on that ascent and continue to take another step forward here. Yeah, here's a look at his last race when he beat those optional claiming foes going the same one turn mile distance at Aqueduct and earned a respectable speed figure that I think puts him in the mix here. He's stepping up against the tougher group this time. But as you said, he's been in great form since this claim by Wayne Potts, two for two, and has been gradually stepping up in class. And it's not like he had never run fast numbers before. And Wayne Potts just kind of get, gotten him back to the better form that he had put forth for Mike Stidham at the beginning of his career. So maybe he's found the keys to this horse. The West Virginia bred Coastal Mission comes off of a win in that Parks Dirt Mile uh, where he was able to defeat Repo Rocks. We have a, a replay of it right here. It was last early, David. He made that big, wide, sweeping move, and he was able to sustain that even after making that. A lot of times horses will make the big move and kind of hang a little bit, but this is a really honest horse. You start looking through his form, you see Mullican and Bright Future, Super Chow, some very solid horses who he's been competitive with, and you can understand why he's a major player in here. If he gets the trip, he should be a horse they have to hold off late. 
Yeah, he did go wide, but he also had some things going for him in that part start mile because he was kind of the one horse in the race that had proven previously that he could pass horses and everybody else kind of wanted to be forward. Three sent very aggressively to the front end. And I think once um, his jockey realized what was happening, took him back off that and the pace came back to him in the stretch and he was able to wear those rivals down. He's a horse that's won a lot in his career. Most of those victories have come in West Virginia against weaker company, but he's run respectably on this circuit before against Braided Stakes competition. He's just very consistent, and he's a strong fit in this race. I just don't know if I want to take him as the favorite coming off that victory. And on the outside, Film Star won the off-the-turf lure stakes on the muddy track at Saratoga a couple starts back. Last out was no match for Coastal Mission and Repo Rocks over at Parks in the Dirt Mile. Drawn to the outside here. Uh, where do you think he stacks up? At the very least, he lures Irad Ortiz Jr., which always has to be seen as a positive. Yeah, he wasn't beaten that far in this very race last year, finishing fourth behind ever so mischievous. Um, since then, he's gone in and out of form. He does come out of that park dirt mile where he too got that same favorable pace setup that winner Coastal Mission did. The difference between these two horses is Film Star had never really shown that he could run like that, rallying from far off the pace. And I think he's going to be better in this race, breaking from a far outside post that long run to the far turn, he's going to be able to get into the forward position that he prefers. And also, it's not noted in the comment line, but I thought he got into a little bit of stretch traffic in that park start mile last time and lost some momentum in the final eighth of a mile. So I think he's better than that. Might be a fair price here. In uh, race number eight, let's take a look at how we put the selections together for this one. David, I think you're going to be looking for a little more value in here than me. Talk to us how you see this one playing out. Yeah, I've been chasing Stage Raider a little bit. I do think he's dirtied up coming into here, and he's got those back races that put him right in the mix. I'm just kind of relying on a really strong trainer like Cherie DeVoe to finally get this horse back into form because I think the pieces are there. He's just got to put it all together. And Film Star, the other one that I want, like I said, just had the minor trip last time in the Park Sturk Mile, and I think he's got a better trip coming to him here. Couldn't get too creative in this one. I felt like Coastal Mission was probably the safest horse in here. You sort of know you'll get that closing kick and probably the most honest and consistent of them. So for David, 3871. I'll go 7421. Those are my non news numbers. I've never been a, a numbers player, but I know my non news smiling down from above because he was a 4 7. And in this case, the chalkier the better was for my non news. So he'll actually like my play in this one. However, you're playing in race number eight on Saturday. We wish you the best of luck. If you enjoyed this video, please click the like and subscribe button below for more great DRF content, including race of the days, stakes previews, and a lot of slots more. You can find it right here.